much money, but I damn sure got it made, and I ain't asking nobody for nothing, if I can't get it all on my own, yeah, yeah, and if you don't like the way I'm living, just leave this long-haired country boy alone, <laughs> teacher man talking on the TV, he's putting down rock and roll. Said he's worried about my soul. Jesus walked on the water, and I do believe that's true. But sometimes I think that old preacher man could try to do a little walking too. Cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing. I can't get it all on my own. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't like the way I'm living, just leave this long haired so cowboy alone. goes to college and the poor boy goes to work poor girl wants to marry and the rich girl want to flirt drunkard wants another drink of wine and the politician wants your boat i don't want much of nothing at all but i might take another toke and i ain't asking nobody for nothing if i can't get it all on my own Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Daniels band right there. Mark, welcome to Let It Ride, man. How you doing, guys? Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Stoked to have you, man. Pumped. Super pumped that you're here. So uh, just a short introduction here. You're a talented musician, guitar player. You're a member of the San Diego Music Hall of Fame. <laughs> and you are a long hair. I'm a long hair. So we're going to ask you kind of how you started getting into the long hair lifestyle. But unlike most musicians and long hairs, you were born with no arms. And you have made really a, a name for yourself for being a talented musician, playing your guitar with your feet and doing many other things with your feet. Uh, but just tell us a little bit about your musical career and how you started getting into it and what kind of introduced you to the music scene. You know, I just connected with it as a kid. My parents had it, one of those uh, buy five records, get another five for a penny kind of like clearing house. I, I forget okay. the, you know, there was a Columbia or whatever. There was this thing. So we had all these great records. It'd be like the equivalent of a, of a parent today, you know, of some young kids having like the most modern music. Yeah. So really my parents were cool. They were hipsters when I was growing up. And we had, you know, at the time, Paul McCartney and, you know, and the Beatles and Zeppelin. Yeah. And we had just all the records and, my dad showed me how to use his record player. I had unlimited access to it as long as I didn't scratch him when I put him back. And I put the little thing in the 45s to keep him from spinning around. You know, like I knew how to use a record player by like six. And, you know, it just affected me. And um, I, my, I, told, I told my parents I wanted to play music and they, they started me on the trombone. They thought that would be sort of, as my dad would say, a foot-friendly instrument. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, you just slide it around. Yeah. Which I wish I would have stuck stuck with it because I had no idea ska was going to come out 20 uh, years later. But yeah. I, I canned yeah. it. 90s, because, right? Ska was huge. Yeah. But I, I canned the trombone because I wasn't meeting any chicks with that. And I wasn't playing <laughs> Stairway to Heaven on that. So, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, just guitar music just found me, I think. You know, and um, I got to say, uh, my dad brought home, uh, he was a construction worker. He brought home a four-string hippie guitar with like flowers on it. it said flower power on it. it was something he found on a job site like mm. buried yeah. so my first guitar was like this relic from the 70s with like rusted strings and um i had a neighbor uh moved in long-haired guy uh, a couple years older and he had a guitar on one day i said hey will you tune my guitar and he showed me how to play godzilla on my guitar so nice. my blue oyster cult was the first uh godzilla. <laughs> Actually, no, I showed him how to play it, and then he showed me how to play it properly with bar chords. He was a first friend of mine that said, you know, it's cool that you can play one string at a time, but if you want to be a guitarist, you got to make your toes do three or four strings yeah, at a time. Yeah. So my, my buddy Darren Phillips, another long hair. Predictably. Ho horse riding, uh, 
ranch running long haired <laughs> rocker taught me how to t- took the time to show me how to do bar chords with, yeah. my, with my toes yeah and then it was on then he just had me play rhythms for hours while he tried to play leads that's what you did in the 80s like if uh-huh. you could do you know if you could do that somebody would go do that for 20 minutes right. while I try to learn a lead solo right <laughs> then you're in okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you started developing the dexterity with your toes I mean I can't even play I can't play guitar regardless with my fingers or really any part of my body but you'd already been using your feet and your toes for a lot of other things as you've been growing up and you must have really developed the dexterity to work the strings and then as you advance with the different bar and everything and everything yep yep yeah i was lucky enough that my parents were kind of clever in the sense that they bought me things like lincoln logs and tinker toys and things that required some dexterity so i think i'm getting a christmas present which is a lot of fun but it was also some sort of like uh, occupational therapy, physical mm-hmm. therapy, you know, yeah, like my yeah. parents were clever like that. Like they bought me puzzles and stuff where I have to kind of develop my dexterity. So, um, yeah, I did. I used my feet naturally. My parents let me. I had prosthetics <clears throat> that were given to me as a child, but they just were clumsy and awkward and robotic and they mm-hmm. didn't feel natural. So I always, you know, I was, I, I was told to learn to use them in case I wanted to. Yeah. But after my couple hours every day of like working with them, I couldn't wait to ditch them and just go back to who I was. Okay. Yeah. 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 They were, when, when you're, when, when you're missing your limbs from above the elbow, like they're not, even today, they're not real practical. They're kind of, okay. you know, they kind of stationary and you kind of bump things with them. And yeah. so I just felt better just being who I was made to be really using my feet was my natural inclination as a baby. Right. <clears throat> nice. Uh, so from there, after you were playing guitar, you wanted to get a little bit more into music. I think in one of the interviews that I saw from you previously, you started around eight or nine years old, but you got a little bit more serious uh, as a teenager or maybe 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Correct. Was that the first band that you got into, or how did it kind of progress from there? You know, uh, again, uh, having a neighbor that, was, that could actually play and was teaching me to play rhythm so he could try to be a lead player, uh, I, I ended up with bass as well sometimes. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, you know, I, I was doing martial arts and, and I kept spraining toes and hurting toes. And uh, so about 16 years old, I I, I, uh, I asked my mother, my mother got me guitar lessons. And, and the first lesson, actually, that's another story. My second lesson, my guitar uh, teacher said, you, you, you know, you might want to pick between martial arts or guitar because you, you keep you know, busting your, busting your toes. Or... You're not going to be able to use your toes as well. And and so I did kind of shift away from martial arts into into full blown rock and roll. And um, the idea that I could make people feel the way I felt when I listened to music that I really liked, like when that hit me, like it was like a real revelation for me. I'm like, you know, if I could play like that, people are gonna like dig, are gonna feel it the way I feel it. Like yeah. that was my real connection to, to my social peer group. Really, was like I was already a smack talker. Okay. You know, and a smart ass, but but to play music and sort of lead people on an emotional journey was like once that hit me that I could do that. Like I pretty much was off and running. Like I spent so many hours practicing my guitar. Mm-hmm. So my buddy Darren Phillips showed me a couple chords, and I would just then I realized I could listen to my favorite music, use these bar chords that he showed me, and figure out my own stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so how about with uh, learning guitar. I mean, I know, you know, your, your hands can bleed and you could get blisters and everything. So before you had those calluses, what was kind of that like? If you were practicing for hours, I'm sure your toes were getting. That's an interesting up. question. I, I actually got to dodge the bullet on the whole callus thing. Cause I was barefoot, uh, from probably age eight till the beginning oh, of so high school. Had some I thickness. skateboarded everywhere I could. <laughs> they didn't have the slip on croc kind of stuff back then. You, <laughs> you had to wear tied on shoes, which I couldn't get out of fast enough. Yeah. Or, um, or flip or, you know, thongs, we call them flip flops. Right, right. And you couldn't skateboard in those. And I skateboarded everywhere I went. So I just went barefoot yeah. 24 hours a day, winter nice. all the time, skateboarded to school every day. Uh, school tried to make me wear shoes. My mom fought <laughs> with them. They said they gave in. Yeah. Um, so really my feet were already pretty much like a hobbit when I started playing guitar. So I could <laughs> outplay exactly most what of my I was just friends. thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the hobbit. Yeah. 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 That was an iron foot. Definitely, man. I was never a tender foot. So I really didn't feel much, much with the calluses. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So I could a... outplay most of my friends. They'd shake their hand and ow, you know, yeah. like, what are you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> baby, come on, dude, what's wrong? <laughs> 
Now, how about the hair then? Did that come along with the music or was it separate? When did you start growing your hair out and why? Or what was the story behind that? It's a little rated R. I had two little brothers and we had a babysitter who was just a couple years older than me that would babysit my little brothers on the weekend so uh-huh. I could go out and have fun. So I didn't have to stay home and watch the little brothers. And she started flirting with me. She was probably 17. I was like 15. She's like, you look just like Leif Garrett. Or uh, who's the other one? Peter Frampton. Okay. You know? And, and, you know, and I had kind of curly hair. And like she was, I'm like, wow. She's like digging me because of my hair. So I started fighting for it for that. But I also looked up. You know, I, was, I was a wannabe Native American. I loved Indians. I had posters of Sitting Bull up in my house. And I just, uh, to me, every, every, from Jesus to, um, you know, uh, Sitting Bull, mm-hmm. I, I, all of my heroes had long hair. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, of course, my rock musician heroes all had long hair. So my identity was tied to that. And I had to really fight for it because my mother would want it cut above the, above the, the collar. Yeah, yeah. And to me, having it below the collar was really the difference between having long hair or not, you <laughs> yeah, know? Right. That's kind of the line. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. the line. So, um, you know, I argued with him. I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I did liberally didn't come home after school on days I knew I had to go get a haircut. Like, I really fought for it from the time I can remember, like 11, 12 years old. I'm like, yeah. oh, I want my long hair. <laughs> I don't know what got in me about it. It was some... Um, then it became a source of this is who I am and you're not going to take it away from me in my mm-hmm. rebellious teenage years. You know, yeah. like, this is my image. And it's... <laughs> so girls... Is that, is that when it started, like your mom started going for it and stuff? Was it the teenage years? or She kind of was... gave up when okay. I would like ditch my hair p- appointments or, or, or I'd go and I'd kind of talk to the haircut lady and be like, listen, just do me a favor. Just keep it a little, you know, like I was really (laughs) negotiating. I I was negotiating and getting sly about anything. I couldn't keep my long hair, to be honest with you. Absolutely. The biggest, the biggest struggle for me was I did telethons. I was like a poster child for some charities like the March of Dimes and the Variety Club. And the producer of that show, when I became 12, 13, started really grinding me to cut my hair because of the image of a fundraising you know, sort of handicapped kid. Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm a rocker, you know? And, um, <laughs> but, but it wasn't making the donations come in. They wanted me to be sort of a, a who's a, who's a modern day, uh, good boy. I, I mean, I'm older than you. Wally Cleaver, uh, Greg Brady. They wanted me to be sort of a clean cut kid. And I, you know, I would come back from these telethons and run with my long haired friends and I'd have a short haircut. And they'd make, you know, I just, I fought producers, parents, uh, Teachers, everybody I could to keep my long hair, actually. It was a constant fight of mine between probably 12 and 18 when I told them I'll do whatever I want with my hair. <laughs> Keeping it long. <laughs> yep. Had a boss tell me uh, that, that uh, if I cut my hair, I'd be eligible for advancement, I, and I refused the advancement. Okay. I said, well, if I can't counsel kids as a long hair, then I guess I'm going to stay at the 550 an hour that I'm making now. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's unreal. We're talking 30, 40, this is like 70s, early 80s neighborhood. Yep. And even still, we get people, kids writing us in all the time who are facing the same things, or even at school. It's probably the more common scenario is that there's now a policy at school that you're not allowed to allowed to have long hair some of the kids have even been barred from school or they have to be in kind of independent segregation unless they whoa so this really yeah and i mean we're talking decades later and still there is that stigma or this uh, kind of desire to have you know the clean cut image for the young boys that's something we advocate against. i don't Absolutely. like the idea that, that that somebody would place my moral integrity on the length of my hair like no. Do you you know what I mean? Like, there's creeps with short hair too. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) lots of them. Probably (laughs) more. You would (laughs) probably more. You would think kind of where we're at now in society and how much different everything is, and there's all this big push for so many different areas in in culture and society for equality. Yes, that this is even still like. you would think this would be one that would have got knocked out like years and years and years ago. Like, why is this one hanging on? Like, why are schools still having a haircut policy and stuff. Actually, a success story, a kid, high school kid we had on our podcast who grew his hair out to, well, first he was having a lot of problems at his school 
And he, we brought him onto the show and talked to him about it and coached him up a little bit and gave him some advice. He went back to the school. He kind of wrote like a petition and everything. He got the rule changed at the high nice. school. He just wrote us a couple of days or last week saying like, hey, guys, they've like changed the official uh. rule and everything. And it was all because of him. And that's really, really awesome. But uh, Cole Taylor, yeah. shout out. Cole, Way to go, it man. sounds like peer counseling is a big part of your guys' uh, <laughs> company and niche as well like people are coming to you for help like help me save my long hair dude <laughs> well man awesome. we do focus on the little guys too we have a whole series of blog posts that are all about like young kids like uh fifth grade and under who've had issues uh at their schools um and you know and their moms are fighting for them and everything we've we've talked to a lot of moms so it's absolutely part of uh you know our community and what we need to uh push for and it, it just go, to me it goes back to like in this age where just equality just in general across yes. society it's like such a big thing to have equal rights for everybody and all this stuff that this kind of little issue compared to some of the bigger ones out there is even still an issue. when, when i was right, growing no up sense. having a tattoo <laughs> Now I could go to my bank and see a skull oh, yeah. on the wrist of one of the nice ladies Absolutely. helping me with my bank. But <laughs> Totally. Totally. Would have never been like that. Would have never yeah. been like that. Keep the fighting 70s, the good 80s. fight. I'm mad now. <laughs> yeah. So they're still discriminating in, in a way, and they're still making school policies about guys having long hair, yet you can have a dagger on your face and look at a bank. <laughs> exactly. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, I think know. the tattoos and the long hair were – I think in the same category for a long time. We're a little bit younger, obviously, but I do remember even when I was uh, under 10 years old, that was like my grandparents or folks or whoever, you know, parents and friends, you know, the tattoo was like, oh, no, don't ever get tattoos. Like, that's, right, you right. don't ever yeah. get a tattoo. Stay away from those kids that have the tattoos yeah. and the yeah. long hair, for goodness right. sake. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. right. Wow. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. That's why I'm glad to be here today because my long hair represented who I was and who I wanted to be mm -hmm. d seen as and, <clears throat> and to follow my heroes. You know, you look at, at say, Braveheart, okay, yeah. the actual story of William Wallace. I mean, the Scots, they, they didn't cut their hair, and the right. British did, and they all wore wigs, and, the, you know, and, and they fought to the death. Now, obviously, they had some political objectives besides their long hair back then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking right. maybe yeah, they had yeah. some other. I don't even yeah. think hair was <laughs> in the conversation. <laughs> no, but, but it does represent a freedom and a sense to say this Absolutely. is who I am, and, and you can't judge me. Mm -hmm based on what you look at first. And as a man who grew up with no arms, I have to say that. I mean, yeah. I could walk into a, a job interview or a class and a teacher may, w with with honest intention, say, well, can you write? And what am I, yeah. you know, and I would think, well, you don't really know me, so thank you for asking. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, it, wouldn't it be the same thing with my long hair if I come in and say, are you a thief or a, or a druggie or, or, a, or a hit man or a barbarian? Yeah. Yes, I'm a barbarian, but I'm none of the other things. Yeah, yeah. And... Why don't you judge me on the content of my character? <laughs> yes, dude. That's exactly <laughs> what we say. I mean, that's exactly it what is. we advocate for. Uh, I can't remember what I was just going to ask, but it was something really funny. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It wasn't funny. Um, last time we were talking, on the other side of the coin, it also isn't like, you know, rebellion. It doesn't mean like we, you know, down to short hairs or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's not like we look down or that it needs to be like that far on the other end of the spectrum. It's just, Hey, that's how, that's where I'm at. That's where I want to be. That's how I want to look and be perceived. And you were telling me is, uh, you felt very much the same way. Uh, yeah. I've got nothing against your short hair. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. Um, Less maintenance. I mean, if you know you're too lazy to have long hair, no, no, <laughs> must I'm be kidding. nice. <laughs> hey, that's real. That's a real thing. Let's be honest. It's a lot of work. It's a lot, it's of, a work. lot of work. I, I I agree with that. I I I want every. I advocate my right to be and look like who I am, and mm -hmm. I support everybody else's right too. You know, you want to have a half a long hair and half short hair or blue hair or. Yeah. Whenever I see somebody with something radical, I always applaud them. But that's not to say there's not a radical person in every conservative-looking person as well. We sure. have to be fair about that. That's yeah. right. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the, the reason it's it, it because it's so easy to cut hair off and it's just looked at as like just a a maintenance thing or like a grooming thing. I, I think maybe that's why it's still a topic. Like, especially in the school. I, I feel like businesses have moved away, though, from that. I mean, you've seen a lot more guys in professional positions having long hair. 
I think parents too. More parents are yeah. letting their kids. Uh, it Maybe it may be a little bit more here in San Diego or Southern California, true. but I would argue that everywhere, even the moms and the parents who write us in, a lot more parents are yeah. are more open to it. I think employers are yeah. more open to it. Right. For some reason the schools are late <laughs> in the game to <laughs> uh, adopt this. <laughs> yeah. Well, starting with Cole, who's already uh, been instrumental in having his school change their policy. Hopefully we can share his story with others and other kids will have the same opportunity to, to hero, make some change. It, yeah. It's really incredible. And I mean, he wrote out a whole thing in a proposal change and took uh, it very professional approach, very serious, you know, not just like rebelling against the man. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It's like, Hey, they want to play. They want to have their rule. I'm going to write a new rule and I'm going <laughs> to propose it and I'm going to see, make the board vote on it. <laughs> yep. Bring it up to the table. Bring it to the board. (laughs) Uh, So we have this Friday coming up the San Diego Music Hall of Fame's second induction ceremony. Mm, We're going to be there. You are going to be there. You're going to be performing. But just last year at the inaugural uh, uh, San Diego Music Hall of Fame, you were inducted in the first class. Can you tell us what that was like and what your experience was like? You know, to get to play uh, the first ever anything that says Hall of Music Hall of Fame yeah. on it. Yeah. You know, that was pretty awesome. Um, Jason Mraz was uh, inducted the same year. And uh, a cover I played for many years is Peaceful Easy Feeling, which was actually not originally written by the Eagles. They covered it. And so uh, you guys are going to probably have to edit that because I, I can't remember his name. It's Mr. Seagull. Um, yes. Oops. Yeah. Don't, don't put that in there. I don't remember his name, but the song peaceful, easy feeling by the Eagles. I got to play that, um, in lieu of the individual who wrote the song being there. So, uh, I got to play with Jefferson J, uh, the founder and MC of the San Diego rock and roll hall of fame, music hall of fame. Yep. So, um, yeah, I was one of the first guys inducted yeah. and it felt really good. I had a, uh, a full full house and um, man, it just felt good. It was my hometown. I got real almost choked up sentimentally because San Diego filming me, uh, you know, playing at Balboa Park and my street performing and things really is the reason why I got to do international work was because of the amount of views that I had from people who filmed me here locally. So um, to get to say thank you to my hometown for like making me international yeah. at a local san diego you know award show was like you listen you guys yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. and it got a little teary man i didn't cry <laughs> right but some of the people in the front that had seen me at balboa park for 20 years or whatever were like yeah we we meant for you to be here you yeah. know and like we support you and uh, That's great. it was pretty it was pretty uh for a big city like we are it was pretty intimate to look at san diego and just thanks for you know, helping me get where i got yeah i man. feel the same way being being able to play and honor the new inductees like for the second the second yeah. annual um i'm looking forward to saying hey you know let's thanks for being here thanks for being a part of my my world some of the inductees are people i've seen play before i was nominated for a music award i mean yeah. some of these guys are you know big fans of mine I mean, I mean, i'm big fans of theirs robin hinkle you know i Took many a date to listen yeah. to Robin Hinkle. He's a pretty good crooner, man. Yeah. You you bring a girl to listen to Robin Hinkle, you kind of come home with her fawning on you if you sing it all. <laughs> Things That's are really going good. It's yeah. a good move. Thanks, yeah. Robin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for one thing, you mentioned just uh, anything with the name Hall of Fame in it is uh, an honor. But San Diego being having a pretty rich musical history and heritage – for one thing, it's surprising that there has not been a San Diego Music Hall of Fame up until a couple of years ago mm-hmm. with such a rich heritage, uh, being in the inaugural class, uh, and also just you know having the respect and appreciation, just recognition of your peers and folks who you have been a fan of over the years, Correct. and all the listeners, and just this kind of local grassroots that ultimately led to you being able to travel and go on tour and have a successful musical career i mean it starts starts local right that's right in my own backyard just just people that would just stop and take a clip of me and put it on their facebook and uh one one little guy got me 11 million views for a not a very good version of um drift away by you know give me the beat boys and uh, that was my first like viral video and uh 
that little gal actually came walking. She was from Ireland, actually, <laughs> speaking locally. But she came walking through Balboa Park with her parents. And they were mm-hmm. supposed to go to Disneyland uh-huh. that day. But they decided to post up to skip their one of their park days to come find me. So as this little gal from Ireland is listening to me, um, her parents go, you know, you ought to thank her. I said, well, for what? She goes, well, she's the one who really pumped your video and got it up to 11 million video wow. views. And uh, yeah. so they actually took a special trip from Disney, you know, instead of Disneyland one day to, to find me about Boat Park. Thank God I was there. And uh, why am I telling this bragging story? But um, <laughs> it was uh, not the greatest performance, but it was it was authentic. It was organic. And it was just me just just playing guitar, singing for my supper and somebody um found that and it it hit me not long after that san diego became kind of a you know kind of a like a hollywood used to be in the 80s or the sunset strip or like people started coming here from all over thinking if we can just play at Lestats or we can just play it yeah. the brick by brick you know what we're gonna make it so a lot of people started coming here like they did the old hate ashbury days like san diego kind of got on the map as a music city <laughs> totally huh? and uh, and in jefferson J, I have to say you know he finds a niche and he finds a way to um, continue to breathe life into the San Diego music scene. And having discovered that there was no San Diego Music Hall of Fame and starting the first one, I mean, I, I give him credit because I think there's going to be a long line yeah. of national, international artists that, that get inducted into here Absolutely. in San Diego. We've, we, put, we put out some ass-kicking musicians out of here yeah, in this town. Totally, yeah, totally, totally. And I, I love can how— Can I say ass-kicking on your thing? That yeah, is absolutely. Yeah, can. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I really uh, appreciate too Jefferson's approach of inducting just a small group every year too. I mean, it, it's going to give this thing life for. I mean, there's so many people that you could choose from, but you know, taking five in every year makes a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, to really keep it going, I mean, every year it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I think it's Frank Zappa one day. Frank Zappa's yeah. from La Jolla. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 There's, there's some Hundred <laughs> percent. So of course, a lot of people think Jefferson J is Frank Zappa. But, <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> uh, Sorry, so, Jeff. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it, but can you tell us what you're going to perform on Friday or what your kind of setup is going to be like, or do you have to keep that under wraps until then? I don't want to keep it under wraps. I um, I, <clears throat> I think to have a, a little more music to, to make it a little bigger, I, I, I might bring a backup guitar so I can play all my chops. And the song I wrote is called We Are the Same. And um, I wrote it here in San Diego uh, at Balboa Park, street performing, and um, it's uh, it's kind of my my trademark song. It it it, it made it onto uh, a Discovery Channel special I did, and then it was used in uh, a couple of commercials. It's uh, my my one the one song I got a royalty over like sixteen dollars for. Nice, you know, and yeah. um, and it, it's called We Are the Same, and uh, I'm gonna play that. <laughs> it's it's um it's one of my proudest songs and it's a song I haven't gotten sick of playing yet because the message still resonates with me. It, it, it speaks to the separation between people based on sometimes appearance, whether mm-hmm. it's hair or disability yeah. or weight or mm-hmm. color or, you know, there's, um, or creed, uh, there, there's that separation that exists between people. And I think people cheat themselves when they come to a preconceived stereotype or an idea of an individual they meet and, yeah. and, and they place that separation based on their own fear or their own, uh, whatever inadequacies themselves and so i really watched this transpire with two people whose worlds were so far apart that they couldn't really make eye contact and that's what that they almost ran into each other because they were trying so hard to ignore each other Mm. and um so i wrote this song and it actually actually took off and i believe jefferson jay asked me to play we are the same uh there and um i'm i'm looking forward to it i want to really uh I want to really drive it home to the audience, see if I can't get them emotional or at least feeling it and get them sort of in a very open space to appreciate and ingest yeah. what the other artists are going to be putting putting up on for the rest of the show. So they, I'm hoping that my song helps people open their mind and receive a, another's message yeah. without... Uh, fear and prejudice i think that's that's love it man it's a little political for for a song but <laughs> no it's great yeah it's great hearing it the other night uh, i heard you play it the other night and uh it did touch me so i'm excited to see you thank up you there on the big stage <laughs> yeah yeah you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do a, a good production of it um i think this time i'm gonna try to get some of the uh other instrumentation that you know it's got i recorded it um, on my album so it's got you know bells and whistles on it so i want to try to get some 
some more of the mel you know i want to yeah i think i'm gonna try to use another guitar player on there probably i'll probably uh headlock jefferson and make him play it with me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two nice. days before nice. the show so i yeah. can freak him out which seems to be my favorite thing to do now <laughs> and so wait speaking of the album uh i would like to talk a little bit about the series you did uh bigfoot needs a hand big, or big, toe, sorry, needs big a, toe needs a toe hand needs. um actually i think it's uh dedos largos <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, El Dedo Gordo. <laughs> del, 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 del Gordo. <laughs> uh, so, you, quick backstory: your band's name was known as Big Toe, but you have kind of come to be known as Big Toe. As you may know, we have our kind of monikers: El Rubio, El Moreno, El Moreno. and others. <laughs> and so, we wanted to bestow upon you an official long hairs moniker, and just taking yeah. the Big Toe in Spanish would be El Dedo Gordo. El Dedo Gordo, I love it. And that's a pretty damn good nickname, yeah. I have to say. I accept it with pride. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Wear it like a badge. <laughs> I will. You know, Big Toe wasn't something I'd picked. It was the name of my band, and these veterans benefits, uh, homeless vet these benefit concerts I would play at, people didn't really know when they go, hey, there goes Big Toe. Yeah. So it kind of became, <laughs> yeah. you know, it put on me. So uh, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take, yeah. Hell yeah! It almost sounds tougher Especially than if Big you Toe. say it like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's how you gotta say it. <laughs> Wait, okay. So going back to the album, you put this series together. It's on YouTube, right? If you just uh, type in Google, uh, "Big Toe Needs a Hand," it Correct. will come up. Awesome four-part series. Yes. And it's you going on an adventure through Europe to meet people and find inspiration and answers for your album, right? Correct. Yes. 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 I wrote my uh, We Are the Same was on my first EP, which I did some time ago. And to, um, it's a little bit old. It's still relevant, and it's uh, never f officially been released. It was in stores here locally for a while, and then it's been sold online. But I, it was an EP with only six songs, and uh, I wanted to finish the album with where I was now. Okay. And um, so uh, I was flown to England to uh, spend... Uh, a full day with five of their top 10 artists, uh, people like Izzy Bazoo and, um, you know, uh, the, some of the bigger, the bigger artists there, uh, yeah. the, the top, they were in the top five. Um, so, um, I got to walk around with them and find out how they crossed that bridge from early inspiration to being pop stars mm -hmm. and some of their, uh, troubles that they had along. Uh, one of them was a, uh, a winner of Britain's got, talent or the voice she won the voice in england mm -hmm. but got tied up in a shelving contract and couldn't make an album for five years oh. so i got to kind of get into the ugly underbelly of the music business from some pop stars that really had to fight their way through it and uh it really sort of sent me uh back home to america with a new attitude about the music business not not a vengeful sort of defensive one, but to really watch myself and protect my integrity as an artist, which which all the folks that I worked with in England had done. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, I, please watch it. It's old, but uh, you'll get to watch me uh, tipping a guy down in the London un underground and him kind of looking at his coin and looking at me like, oh, all right. So yeah. there's some pretty good footage in there of me trying to make my way through London with a guitar on my back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had a great time doing that. And... Um, so, uh, yeah, Big Toe Needs a Hand was my last really good good work that I did, and I'm really proud of it. And so uh, check it out. Yeah. And check out the artists that I got to interview because they were kind enough to share their stories with me yeah. in their own backyards. Yeah. yeah. It's beautifully shot, and uh, I haven't seen all the episodes, but I can't wait to uh, finish the series and stoked on that. So, guys, definitely go and check that one out. Uh, speaking of just being in Europe, I mean, have you done other world travel and got to – go uh you know play in any other parts of the world how's Abs that been absolutely yep done holland for uh, an award show uh three times got to bring my kids there and uh done england um i did the commercial there for the 2016 paralympics was called we are the superhumans and i got to play the role that's another one you can find on youtube so yes go we're, watch the, that one. we're awesome. the superhumans uh <laughs> and that i got to i was cast as the rock and roll lead guitarist but i actually uh, unbeknownst to me, ended up recording all my own tracks at Abbey Road Studios. So that was oh, kind of wow. cool. So when you hear the lead solo on the We're the Superhumans commercial uh, for the 2016 uh, Paralympics, that was actually my lead solo. <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, they, they wardrobed me to look like a rock star with a scarf and all. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, a lot of hard work. Um, then I was also in the um, Ripley's Believe It or Not, I believe, 100th edition of their uh, hardcover book. So I, it was pretty interesting buying some $3 milk and uh, some imitation Crocs at Walmart when a, somebody came up to me with a book. And next thing I knew, I was surrounded at my local Walmart because I was in this uh, Ripley's book. But I went and promoted that. <laughs> A year or so ago, uh, on the morning shows around around the east, and so I'm I'm in the uh, hundredth uh, anniversary, hundredth issue of their yearly book. So killer. Those are my my cool Ripley's. Believe it or not, I don't know. <laughs> it was yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm playing locally still. Um, I've been on tour a lot. I was in Turkey uh, not long ago, and the day that we showed up to go to Turkey, we found out that all visas to Turkey had been canceled and oh, had we no. not printed ours 24 hours earlier or, or later we wouldn't have got to go so we really no went way. i brought my band big toe to turkey um right when political tensions began to arise between our nation and theirs and uh so kind of just in time just in time yeah i came back and uh it was pretty interesting um i never s went anywhere in, in turkey without our guide okay yeah a, a, a political science officer <laughs> Um, 10 feet away from us. Every time I would try to slip away to just get whatever, just go look at things or something, we always had somebody with us. So there was, it was interesting. I will say the people of Turkey were wonderful. They treated us wonderfully. I have nothing to say about the people or the government of Turkey. But it was, um, there were political tensions, I guess, between our governments. And it was kind of interesting as an artist because we were there to entertain people and right. to give people inspiration and doesn't matter what they're wearing or what nationality they were. I think the language of music was clear. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's so great. God bless Turkey. I'm sorry you guys are having a hard time with our guy. I'm not going to touch it. I hope you all work it out. <laughs> it's like watching your parents get in an argument. Yeah. You just kind of go in your room and shut the door. That's yeah. where I'm at with that. Try to stay <laughs> out of it. Try to stay out of it. But. What's uh, one of the, what's maybe your favorite place that you played or performed? Favorite country or even in the U.S. or a venue, whatever it may be. You know, uh, up until um, uh, I was, up until I played with Mana, which is another story. They're probably as big as the band U2 is in oh, wow. Europe and America, and they're enormously uh, popular in in all the Latin American world. They've had a string of number one hits for twenty years. They invited me. Um, I went to Spain to play on a show called El Ombiguero, which means the Ant Hill, and it's like a candid camera. And they used me as a prank. <laughs> with some fake arms to um, act like I was going to give a guitar demonstration. I was billed as Mark uh, Johnson, <laughs> former guitarist for Bon Jovi. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and they shipped these serious, <laughs> serious music, high school age and up music students in on a bus for this workshop to listen to Bon Jovi's guitarist. And I had a guy come up, and I had these artificial arms on that looked very real. <laughs> And I had I picked a volunteer to come up and and uh, and pull on my wrist to 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 show how strong my wrist was. The arms flew off. Yeah. I did get a lot of uh, a lot. I got some negative press. A, a lot of uh, my fans and stuff were going, "That's horrible! Those Americans just exploited you." I go, "Actually, it was the Spanish that came right. up with this idea." But <laughs> some people thought it was in poor taste. I thought it was funny as hell. Yeah. Uh, I think the guy that pulled my arm off thought it was funny <laughs> after he got out of therapy yeah. but um <laughs> that show i performed a, a song called um vivir sin aire which is written by a band like i said about as big as the eagles or or or, or u2 wow. in all of mexico and all the latin american world south america so they saw that and asked me to come on tour with them and and uh in 2016 and 17 i got to play uh Madison Square Garden twice, the LA wow, Forum four no times. Way. I was so with Mana rad. when when they they broke the Rolling Stones record for any one rock band that had sold out the LA Forum. Really? Rolling Stones thirteen, Mana fourteen, and I was no there that way. night. So uh, I met some rock stars that have toured the world and uh, showed me the world. Mm. Showed me what it was like to play an arena every night. Yeah, and. Um, and what is that like? 
What is it like being on stage in an arena with what? I mean, 10, 15,000 people just. The biggest one was a festival called Pal Norte, and uh -huh. which is in Monterey, Mexico. And it was the, the last day was the Killers, the okay, Offspring. Yeah, yeah. The Offspring and Headliner. Mana. Uh, so I closed a 70,000 Oh my god. Person 70K. festival. 70k. Damn. <laughs> um, my only regret about that show was they I had told them a month ago I was trying to learn some more of their songs and they hit me up at their biggest festival of their tour yeah. and said, "What else do you want to play with us?" And I still I hadn't quite been confident enough with my electric guitar work to be to join them. So he was kind of disappointed their lead singer fair. He's like, really? Okay, all right. Well, we'll just do the same one we've been doing. Uh, okay. But um, to play in front of that big of a crowd was uh, amazing. And, and what I learned from Mana was that the rock stars that have endured in this, and I'm going to say beyond music, athletes, anybody who's made it in their professional entertainment or you know media careers, had to learn to be human and had to learn to be ungodlike and had to learn to be humble. And I watched these guys work so hard for their fans every night. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable to, to watch them. Um, one of my first shows, and I have to tell this quick story, the lead singer, Fair, you got a picture, he's like Bono, John, Bon Jovi. Yeah. Anywhere Massive, he goes, he's known celebrity. anywhere yeah. that people speak Spanish. Okay. You don't ever go to a wedding in Mexico or Spain or South America without hearing a Manas song. <laughs> I mean, it's, they're huge. He's got his wireless microphone in one hand, his leather pants on. He's walking to the stage through the backstage hallway. He passes a woman who obviously works for him. She's carrying boxes of paperwork. Okay. She looks in her 30s or 40s, a little yeah. small. He's a big, tall rock star. Without saying a word, he takes the boxes out of her hand, walks them to the end of the hallway, passes them off to the production office. Basically, then he takes three steps on stage, throws his hands up in the air, and 50,000 people start screaming. <laughs> his last act before being worshipped by an audience was to carry some boxes for an old lady that worked for him. It could have been their laundry orders. It could have been their lunch orders. But when it was all said and done, I watched a touring band. The truckers would say, you know, you were better last night, Big Toe. You know, the, the truck drivers out in the parking lot with their rigs running, ready to move the gear would go, yeah, you were good, but last night you were better. You are a little cheap. <laughs> I watched this traveling army of people that support each other in their jobs from the from the truck drivers to the lead singer. Yeah. There was a sense of camaraderie and, and um I've heard of artists that won't speak to their crew. They won't let their you know not mana. These were guys that had become world famous by staying with a good work ethic and putting their audience uh first. Yeah. I'd watch them sign autographs. I knew they were beat tired. I'd seen them there at six in the, you know, in, in the evening for sound check, and now it's you know, one in the morning, and they're signing autographs, and they're just staying and staying. So um, my favorite gig was not Madison Square Garden. I, uh, I, 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 there were some sound problems. I, I made some mistakes. So my first night at Madison Square Garden was a little scary. Um, but uh, Was it like the – as far as what, like your feeling in the gut, like uh... – Actually, that the guitar of, player let me do his sound check so he could go off with Paul Reed Smith, the maker of some of the finest guitars in the world. So he wanted to go to dinner with one of his guitar sponsors, and he asked me if I could sound check his guitar, which was the biggest honor I'd ever been given in music, <laughs> ever. And that night, his guitar didn't work, only uh, mine. Uh, so no. we had this guitar solo thing that we did where it was really, he was kind of carrying me on the chords, and I was just doing the licks, and... Uh, He's looking over. It's on YouTube. He's looking over at the sound guy like, dude. <laughs> and he's looking at me like, you checked my guitar, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it was terrible. I was. Uh, we pulled it off. We got through it. And he even told me that. And he goes, Mark, my friend, for all show tonight, Madison Square Garden. have to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> crusher. You know, they didn't can me from the tour. They brought me the next night back, and we did yeah. it again. So um, that's what I mean. Like, everybody's so like, oh, you got to be a rock star. And, you know, it's hard work, and the people that make it in this business are people that learn how to be human first. Mm. And guess what? They all had long hair, every Shit. one of them. You can never be above your fans. You can never be yeah. above your fans. And uh, Manaz kept their long hair since they started in the early 90s, too, and they did their, you know, their MTV hit with Shakira, and they did one with Santana, and... And I'm like, here we are in 2016, 17. Right? We still got our long hair. Yeah. <laughs> badass. This is badass. Thanks for letting me share. I'm sure you have to edit a lot of that, but no, you know, to get no, to yeah, that's a great that. story. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty interesting to come back and um, oh, oh, really quick. My first night playing was uh, at the um, San Diego State. You know that the the in the, the they have the 
arena. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't know what it is now. It used to be the football stadium, I think, but it's a big like amphitheater outdoor. Not the right. outdoor one. We were in the indoor one. Oh, okay, bon okay. Played last. And oh, and all right. Yeah, yeah. And it, yeah. I don't remember the name of it. Doesn't matter. It's the big arena. Viejas. Yeah, I think it's Viejas. Viejas Arena. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it yeah. was. Um, they didn't want to let me in the parking lot. There, right? come a little closer to the mic. We're losing you there. They didn't want to let me in. I pulled yeah. in with my, uh, you know, my girlfriend at the time, and uh, I think one of my kids. And the cops like, "Get that car out of here!" I had my CRV, my Honda <laughs> CRV, and I'm trying to get in there. I'm like, you don't understand. I'm on the bill. I'm playing tonight. I'm playing with the band. I don't give a blankety blank who you are. Get that car out of here. I had to pull off to the side and call their manager. And their manager came out with our, our VIP backstage passes. And God bless the police. But this guy was a jerk. Wouldn't listen to a word I said. So I see him backstage now. Now they're moving the red ropes every time I come in and out. And he's standing there, and I won't look at him. I finally gave him eye contact. He goes, well, I just want to tell you, I'm protecting you now as much as I was protecting the band from you <laughs> before I knew who you yeah. were. And I'm like, that's pretty fair, I guess. <sighs> all right, yeah. all right, fair enough. But I think it was interesting to see, you know, I pull in in a crappy car. They wouldn't <laughs> even let me in the parking lot. I had to prove that I was on the bill that night. So. At least you know he's serious about his job, right? <laughs> He didn't apologize, but I gave him a look like, because, listen, I argued with him in front. I had my mother in the car. Oh, man. Oh, man. When and someone shuts you down. and telling me, beat it, you know? <laughs> when someone won't even listen to what you have to say, that, to me, is, uh, even in that situation where he probably is dealing with lots of people and has to have a pretty protective, you know, pretty, pretty cautious in that point, but if someone just won't even let you speak, that's uh, kind of beyond security. It could be disrespectful. I don't know. Hard to say if you're not in the person's shoes, but uh, you got to at least hear somebody out. Wouldn't hear a word. Yeah. Oh, man. That's I don't care who just... you are. <laughs> 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 What's that? An almost famous. You're not on the list. <laughs> you're not on the list. <laughs> that happened actually to a few of my friends that joined Sammy Hagar's band when they were first in there. They would go out to go listen to the opening band and couldn't get backstage. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was you, Mona and Dave. Uh, so I I got a question, but it's kind of getting a little outside of music. Where are you going? This is a music uh, okay. still. No, it's still. Uh, so we talked about Jefferson J, and I just want to bring up his project that we are also helping him with, The Hunt for the Holiday Spirit. Which is a show that he has created and written where the first show of its kind where all of the characters, all of the performers are folks with special needs. You are pretty familiar with this project and what Jefferson's got going on. Tell us a little bit more. Have you have you worked with him much on this? Are you are you very familiar with it? Will you be involved with it? What's your take on this whole project that he's working on? Jefferson J. I, I, first of all, yes, I, I'm, I'm happy to join in this project. We've been kind of busy, both of us in our separate careers. But um, I back I back Jefferson J. on on this because he understands from the core that people with disabilities are people mm. with disabilities. Mm -hmm. they, they're not defined by it. You can't get four guys that use wheelchairs in a room and think they're all going to just be buddies. We're people. We're individuals first. Mm -hmm. So the language of people first language, you know, it's not armless Mark. It's Mark has no arms. I mean, I don't care if they call me that, but and my friends have. You know, if there's three or four Marks in the room, it's an armless Mark. But the the uh, the, the reality is Jefferson, I think, understands that the, the individuals uh, with disabilities, and, and he's very close to that cause of helping them find their <clears throat> niche. Um, as as individuals, whether they be artists or scientists or whatever, like um, it people first really makes a lot of sense because I'm the only long haired guy I know who was born without arms. I, I, there may be in a few, but I'm not seeing them anywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and that's that's kind of who I am. Where we may have an individual that's got nothing to do with with music or long hair that was born without arms, and we might get together and go, well, we know what it's like to chop a steak with our toes with a knife. But other than that, you're from another world than me. And I think Jefferson gets that. I think he wants to harness people's individuality um, by overcoming their, their, their different challenges and things like that. And, and I, I support him completely with this. Um, there's a Challenge Athletes Foundation we have here that's kind of working that niche. But when it comes to the arts and uh, performing arts, I think Jefferson's leading the charge on this one. And yeah. he's got my support for sure. I'll carry the banner. 
Yeah. I don't have to hold it like that or in one <laughs> foot, but I'll uh, I'll run behind him with the banner. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Hop. It's inspiring stuff. We're so pumped to you know help in any way that we possibly can, and we really really want to see this thing uh, become a reality, and uh, just can't support the guy enough uh, on it. He's got a lot of idea. He's got <laughs> more projects and ideas, yeah. but. It, there's a lot of people who have ideas, but really taking the idea and making it real and taking it to the finish line, whether mm -hmm. it's the San Diego Music Hall of Fame, which did not exist. Yep. I can't imagine what kind of energy went into creating that right. and how much, you know, that took. And then this show is and a he sold it out and yeah. sold it out. Yeah. yeah. And now is doing the second annual. I mean, even making annual. the decision of what artists you put in in the first oh. annual one, when you're looking at a list of 250 candidates. So many I mean, barriers. How many how how many people are going to judge you based on who you pick to go in there and be pissed or like oh you yeah. didn't pick this guy like just that one selection process could have like caused it could have taken totally. the whole thing down potentially. <laughs> but here we are. We got the second yeah. annual induction ceremony is coming up, and that project has been taken to fruition. No doubt, the hunt for the holiday spirit, another extraordinary project, is going to come to fruition. We're pr happy to be supporting that hopefully we can link up with you and uh in our efforts there and other projects he's a he's a heck of a guy he's don't a really know many people like him we're a heck of a city and you guys are a heck heck of a heck of a group because i i, I see you uh really just getting into the fabric of of supporting san diego's uh different populations that mm -hmm. uh you know you're kind of showing that long hairs don't just charge with a battle axe sometime we come around with some hair for a kid you know i mean that's that's <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. right yes Love that. dude absolutely but we will yeah, charge man. with a battle axe <laughs> yes. if yeah, as, yeah, needed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as needed as <laughs> needed totally man uh you know we're really honored just to live in this city to be here to be part of it the more we get involved with other organizations and networking and working with other creatives and other talent and stuff it just uh it really goes to show like how special san diego is you know and there's a lot of industries here that are kind of like low-key mm -hmm. and then there's obviously some ones that we're super well known for known uh known for music being one um, but we're just blessed to be a part of it and we're just, uh, you know, we're going to keep working the community from San Diego outward. I, I, <laughs> I hear the word inspiration and stuff like that, but, uh, um, I have to say, you know, that, uh, the long hairs is, is, is inspirational to me. I kind of felt like I was banging my own drum. And when you find <laughs> out there's a, a company and organization, a, a phil philanthropic organization at times, you know, that's really kind of understanding the individual and uh, and being proponents of our rights to be individual and mm -hmm. and to be accepted as individuals. Yeah. With, it really speaks very close to my heart with, with other issues of diversity, whether it be disability or things like that. We're, mm -hmm. we're saying don't judge us by the fact that I'm using my feet or that I have long hair. And, and I think that's where Jefferson and his um, hunt for the holiday season is – Really, it's the same message, and I think it's great to see that we're, you know, this this city is cranking out some heroes. Yeah. And you guys included. I couldn't wait uh, to be a part of your organization. Man. I just want some of that cool oil on my hair because it gets a little <laughs> frizzy when I'm out at the beach. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> we're going to juice you yeah. up, man. Yeah, man. That's what you've been saying. We're, <laughs> I'm we're ready. stoked to have you. We're stoked. Uh one thing I do want to ask, and you just kind of mentioned it earlier when you were talking about Jefferson and the hunt for the holiday spirit and the people, you know, there's just a different variety of people with disabilities that are coming in. One of our good friends, you know, he's a, he's a little person and they, I don't know exactly what your dis, if your disability has a name or is it something that's common, but is there a community like around your disability? I mean, if someone, if there is another kid who's a long hair listening to this, like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just wondering. Cause like for our experience, there's like the little people of America mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So like, is there's not a lot of people born without arms. Now there's a lot of um, coalitions, you know, for, for am people who've lost limbs, sure. and amputations. military mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. and elsewhere. I've worked with, the, I've done, um, I've done presentations and in, in co a comedy music routine for the wounded warriors more okay. than once, <laughs> okay. you know, and I've, yeah. I've got to go into, you know, the hospital rehab centers where people that came back from Afghanistan or Iraq missing limbs. And mm. I'm the first guy they see. And, they always want to salute me. And I go, look, no, I haven't been in combat. I don't deserve a salute. 
I did get my butt kicked by my ex-girlfriend really bad, so I have a little PTSD, but <laughs> nothing like you guys. So right out the gate, I'm telling them, you know, I didn't have to lose anything, but I was able to explain that that they still can live a full life yeah. regardless of a missing limber. But I don't think there's a whole lot of uh, we are the ar- people born armless uh, okay. societies in the <laughs> okay. world. I'm a, I'm a member of a group called the Can Do Musos, which is a... Uh, a, mu- a group of musicians with different varying disabilities from all over the world. So okay. there's that. Um, Very cool. There's another couple of people I know that played guitar with their feet. One before me, Tony Melendez, and uh, he played for the Pope in the 80s. And then there's a guy that I kind of, I, I think he toted me as one of his influences. He's younger than me. He got to open for the Goo Goo Dolls. His name is uh, George Dennehy. <laughs> so there's a handful of his guitar players that play with our feet. There's another guy down in South America that's so good, I don't want to mention his name. He could probably play eruption better than eddie van halen on his toes <laughs> wow so uh i'm gonna do my best yeah. not to step on his toes when i yeah. meet him because he's really really good now <laughs> but for the most part you know i've um, been a part of um uh the san diego access center i've helped with some of their events to celebrate the ada the americans with disabilities act which is not just a chance to get sued a lot of businesses are very scared of that the ada is a language of um providing equal opportunity for folks and okay. not, not necessarily making you put an elevator in your, in your house or anything. Yeah. Um, so I've been involved in many disability organizations, but uh, as far as there being a club of guys, you know, maybe I'll start yeah. one. Well, it sounds like you, <laughs> with the guitar players, maybe, I, I don't know if they all don't have arms or something, but they're just playing they with their toes. I mean, that uh, that's a little community right there. That I mean, geez, it is. But we, we have different right styles, and we're from different parts of the yeah. country, and we've never really gotten together. It's okay. let's start a band because you know I, <laughs> I don't know. It's um, you know, it's very interesting. Um, I think I'm going to continue to just support any agency that has uh, diversity and equality yeah. in mind, and and um, because I don't think there's enough of us. I think people born without arms is like one in 250,000. Okay, wow. So we're pretty few. We'd be a pretty small army yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. asking everybody to arm me. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. That, was, that was lame. I'm not uh, using that one again. Yeah. <laughs> good effort. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah. it was lame. <laughs> it was solid. <laughs> The no texting question. and driving was... Uh... Yeah, that was... <laughs> well, I don't mean to, 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 to take the reins here, but, you know, dealing with long hair, like, there's a couple spots now that I'm getting older I can't really reach very well. Yeah. To get, like, I started getting a dreadlock. So, you know, if I, if I start looking into good products for men with long hair, I'm going to be really excited. Like, I don't think you guys realize you had me day one. Like, <laughs> I'm ready for your commercials and your walkathons and your marches and uh, all that stuff because, you know... Uh, having a site dedicated to or, or a company dedicated to, to people with long hair like there's some needs i have when sure. it comes to my own long hair sure. presentation you know what i mean yeah. and, so one thing we often talk about here on this podcast with every single guest that we bring on is you know long hair is awesome it's great to rock it out and just rep it hard but also sometimes it could be a real pain in the ass yeah so for you what are some of your long hair problems like just the top two you can tell us well i'm a little bit follically challenged on top i'm thinning i'm not bald okay. on top but i've okay. got the you know a little thin on top so some coverage on that um there was a commercial not long ago showing a 70s guy in a uh, in a, a you know leisure suit with a bald head <laughs> and long hair and i'm like that can never be me <laughs> so being a poh prisoner of hat okay is a, is a, <laughs> okay look for help on that being in San Diego, love that. driving with my window <laughs> down, playing at the beach, uh, having property in the desert, I get super dry ends and they get split. Okay, yeah. I yeah. have a hard time giving myself a ponytail. I can get one foot back there, but I can't get them both back there to do the ponytail. Uh, so okay. some like uh, hairband where I could actually get it out of my face myself would be mm. really amazing. Yeah, That's not got flowers on Not that there's anything wrong with that. Guys, yeah, if you want right. to wear your wife's flowered <laughs> headband, that's fine. I'd like to have something every now and then that shows sort of my native american feeling my rocker feeling my california feeling i don't always want to borrow a girlfriend's head head, hair tie or headband so love it something that made me look kind of tough and yeah well we know about that (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh sorry yeah oh you're good cheers boys cheers boys good to be hanging yeah that's clear yeah thank you good to be hanging here thank you bond beauty repping Susie bond you know, if this goes well enough, maybe I'll pick up some kind of a foot uh, pedicure sponsor <laughs> after this, too. Man, I could be dialed in. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it's been an it's, it's been an issue uh, for me to keep my hair like always how I want to present it. Sometimes it's just kind of shaggy. Like when I went okay. to Mexico to do a telethon last year, I. Uh, they, they, they wanted me to get a trim. They're like, yeah, here's a little thrash. But I just got off a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I'd like to be able to sport my long hair presentable to any uh, situation. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's what it's about. Kick ass. Well, we all have our share of long hair problems, that's for sure. <laughs> I think all of us uh, doesn't always look as nice as we would like it. So you're not alone with that one. But, uh, hey, we talked about it earlier. I would love to juice you up with a little bit of uh get your little hairstyle going with some of our hair serum and a couple of uh, other products i'm in would you mind if i uh took a crack at it i was hoping you guys would fix my hair actually <laughs> <laughs> all right man awesome well uh i'm gonna, gonna come right behind you here and uh i'm gonna try my best and uh we got a head wrap here one of our long hairs head wraps that we picked out this is the gi snow it's a little white and gray and black camo and uh, we'll use a couple of these other products here and uh, see what we could do to yeah, get you dialed in, man. Yeah, they smell too. It smells kind of like wood shop or uh, yeah, yeah. in the forest or something, man. Well, you're I bathing like in it. sawdust, if you will. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to do any readjustments over there. We could, uh, we could so still you, be... Should we take a break or you keep talking? No, okay, let's all keep right. going. I think me, yeah. we could keep talking. Uh, cool. Right, well, he's going ah! through... Uh, oh, that's not even bad, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, El Rubio is uh, expecting a lot worse. What, just full bald up yeah, top? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what to expect, you know? He's got the uh, prisoner of hat going on. <laughs> so, uh, P.O.H., yeah, love uh, yeah. it. Yeah, I'm going to put the head wrap all the way down around your neck so I can lift it up afterwards. Okay. So all right. So uh, for everybody watching here and listening, we have the G.I. Snow head wrap going on. It's going down below the neck here. El Rubio is uh, working the flow here. Sponsorship is the key to everything, man. I'm going to look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to use we a got... little bit of the Sunset Citrus. You smelled the wood shop last okay. time, which is really nice. This has got a little bit different scent. Mm -hmm. But I uh, smell that. It's tough, too. It's got a tough, yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a feminine fragrance. It's not a feminine fragrance. It's tough. I like so, it. Uh, yeah. We don't use a whole lot, but I'm just going to use a couple of drops there. Okay. And this is going to go really just in the ends of your hair. So I'm About as much on. as a dime in your fingers, maybe? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. There we go. He's working it in the hair there. Just into the tips. Yeah. This is going to make it super easy to comb out. I don't have curly hair, of course, so it's a little bit different. So, Mark, how often do you get, like, a trim, or do, or do you ever do you get the ends cut or the split ends dealt with? I do, and I did at my uh, my booking agent, Mark Goldman's request when I went to Mexico City to, to play a, a, a telethon. Uh -huh. A lot of people have been telling me I should just cut it high and tight and, you know, accept the, the thinning and just go with a super short haircut. Uh, okay. And I was considering that until I met El... El Rubio. El Rubio. I knew that. I was getting, <laughs> you know, um, I was really about to give up the long hair until I, till you, till I found you guys. Oh, like no this, way. Is, okay, this is kind of my. I'm yeah. thinking I'm going to pull it off for a little while yeah. longer, and if I do Dude, cut it, it's great. going to a good to your good cause. Okay. Going to the kids and the wigs. Love it. Love it. This is my favorite um, comb here. Okay. It's a synthetic bone. They don't really make them out of real bone anymore, or they shouldn't because you know it kills animals and everything. But this is just glides through the hair. And with the hair serum, it should just... Is that one of your products? Uh, Can I not, get the It's color? actually a sample that uh, we've been working on. You know, we've had some priority into getting some other products done first. Combs and brushes are coming. Uh, Someday. One, so, okay. probably 2020. But you, you found yeah, the right match. It's already looking good. It's already looking good. Okay, going back to your thinning and, the, you know, the b little bit of balding up there. We have, no, we have a philosophy here, okay? Okay. It's called respect the comb over, okay? Guys who, if you have to do a little comb over up there, it's fine. Actually, what I what we would advocate for, even if that goes full bald up in that front area, just keep letting that long Are you serious? ride. Oh, yeah, baby. I have, we have a picture. I'll show you when we're done here. We have a photo of a guy Colorado. we saw in Colorado rocking it so hard, like just – Full bald up top. I don't want Shiny, that. Oh, but just long and clean and looking great everywhere else. 
Uh, so, you know, I mean, you got to work with what you got, you know, it's, uh, it just kind of goes back to the, you know, a comb over really, it, there's a way, like one person tried to cut my hair for America's Got Talent audition. And this lady said, don't wear a hat. Let me, and she tried to make me some volume up there Okay. by like scooting, not comb over, but like scooting some of the back hair up uh, a little like bit and they're fluffing it up. Yeah. Yeah. There are ways around it, but see, I always liked headbands. Yeah. And if I could cover between my eyebrows and maybe the top of my forehead, I might yeah. could pull it off. Yeah. No, totally. Well, we're going to see right now. We're going to we get that headband up on there. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, I've got a little hair serum in there. All right. Uh, if you could feel like it's looking tangled, good, guys. Really came out. It's looking I can nice. tell. Yeah. So now I'm going to go with uh, the paint splatters. Okay. These are one of our brand new collections of hair ties for guys. I like it. These are pretty radical. Yeah. We'll get you going with a pack of these. Okay. Uh, or whatever collection you like for that matter. I'm going to do... Uh, ponytail, or as we like to call it here, a men's tail. All right. And then I'm going to lift the head wrap up after that. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to wear with a head wrap, <gasps> if I'm wearing a hat, <laughs> I'll do it tied way down as far as it'll go. Like Mine had a little camera. Okay, okay. okay. So you there for a the second, on, boys. But, but when I'm doing a head back. wrap, I'll do it just an inch or two up. Just a little bit higher. I don't so mind that. What I'm gonna do in this instance. That's the samurai warrior look. Yeah. Exactly. I'm down, and I don't want to wear a hat out of here today, man. I want to. I want to feel my forehead hit yeah. the breeze for a change. Get that wind feel. <laughs> it's great. If I can even look one tenth as cool as dude back here, I'll be happy. Uh, it's going good so far, but uh, let's, let's hang in there. I always try to get all the little flyaways. Uh, my hair is straighter too, though, so it's a little bit easier to do that. Yeah. And I'm going to pull. Tell me if it's getting too tight. Not for me, man. Feels like it's all in in there. The, I don't like the little man. flyaways. I'll bring the camera uh, on over to the side here so we can get a little, little better shot. Let me kick over there. Oh, yeah. Look at this. There we go. Whoa. You can't watch out for yeah. years, man. Yeah, is it going to look cool? Uh, dude, this is badass. We got the logo <laughs> facing out. Yeah. Uh, really, the colors pop in your hair, too. So I'll kind of grab both ends to tighten it down a little bit like cool. this. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I know that one. cinching a little bit. I can. And it feels right. clean. Yeah. Tight. So now what I'm going to take, uh, this is another product that we're working on. It's not done yet, but this is sea salt spray. Cool. And... uh. Kind of the old sea salt spray, smell. folks. Wow. Yeah. It's like the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually real Pacific Ocean water right there, uh -huh. scooped out from the Pacific. Uh huh. <laughs> and this is just going to help with uh, keeping those little flyaways. So, you know how a hairspray really kind of holds things down tight and it's kind of almost sticky and yeah, crunchy? Yeah, yeah. Yes. This is, you know, a great substitute for a uh, hairspray. It's yeah. going to give you hold. It's going to give you some ability to move and texturize the hair and give oh, it some, okay. mo some, you know, let it or it will do what you want, but it's not going to be all hard and crunchy like hairspray does. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. So, this is good, man. Yeah. All right. So, we got it all dialed. Now I'm going to pull the head wrap up, and I pull from the top edge. Okay. And I'm going to pull that, especially how you want it to be a little bit covered up here. Yeah, covered. Yeah, there you go. May, depending on how far it goes up, I may fold the underneath up, but let's just burn those bridges when we come to them. Yeah, you got so. a nice wide range here with the head wrap, so you can get that full coverage from eyebrow on up if you'd like. Oh, yeah. So let's go. You still got some more room there. I sometimes wear the do rags too, but you know oh, okay. it's nice. To, but they yeah, get real yeah. hot in the summertime because you got oh, yeah. no ventilation in your head. You know, like yeah. if I could get a little well, uh, breathing along with the coverage. What's nice about our head wraps is they're very breathable. They uh, are. Yes. Yeah. You'll see as you kind of wear this uh, for a little bit of time. Let me tell your viewers, by the way, this is not a scripted infomercial. I am truly <laughs> excited about this product, yeah. and I was not briefed on how this was going to go. <laughs> no. I'm excited no. about this product. <laughs> this yeah. is not a, a canned scripted thing about how I can just do nothing but flatter this stuff. I'm digging this stuff. Yeah. This stuff's going to be my rocking new look. Heck, so I always yeah. fold it under a okay. little bit on the bottom edge. And that keeps it from slipping up. Okay. Because I don't want it to start 
hooping up this way and like sliding back, especially you're not going to be able to push it back down very easily. So I want it to be secure. Okay. And because you got it tied right here, it's not going to go up on the back. It's oh, good. Be secure. Oh, good. And I think in this is instance, I'm even going to pull the, the front edge down a, a little, little bit as good. well. Yeah. It feels good a little call. like it might just good call because of the way my... Does it feel like it's, it's looking, sliding? It's it feels like dope. it might because of my slanted forehead. No, it looks good. Slant going. Yeah, I got kind of a... What do you call so it? So then in that case, I, I pulled it back a little bit more over the ears so it could go down a little bit more right there. Nice. So another thing you could do with these head wraps too is, it, you know, because if you do prefer to wear a hat, you can have this under a hat, and it's uh, actually still really nice. Keeps to it from sweating. Keep the your sweat hat. from getting down your face and everything. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to check it out though without it, man. I've been a POH for so long now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, this is looking great. It looks really good. I might get a little. I'm gonna get over here on the side. How's it feel? It feels wonderful. It feels okay. real clean and tight and airy, and uh, I feel like I look cool. Yeah, yeah that's dope. Dude. Is it really? On, yeah, right you look solid. I'm going to pull it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't want it to be slipping. Well, that's kind of an in look, too. There's the uh, the uh, kind of a little bit right over the eyebrow. I see guys do that with their with their headbands sometimes, yeah, yeah, like yeah. just like low. Right. Is it uncomfortably low? It's, or is it's it not. No, it feels right. secure, actually. You see? Yeah. Dude, that's pretty it's sick. It's all right. It's no, all right. It looks sick. Man. You're not getting it's the dope. top coverage like you were uh, talking about. So, you know, like you said, you could still wear a hat over it if you want. How to. thin am I on top? Are you I seeing mean, all you the can still, This is still where it's thinning right here. So it's still visible. You're not getting that top coverage for sure. Yeah. But uh, what if I unfold it a little bit? Right, it yeah, will, but then I'm it. afraid it's going to slip. Okay, okay. <laughs> Oh, he's going with the backwards hat, huh? <laughs> well, if it was a fitted hat, that would work. Yeah. Uh, let's try this. I'm gonna yeah, you got to loosen underneath. it up a little bit. All right. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. No, it looks dope with the wrap under uh, the hat. I like that a lot. I've seen that look on some of my band members. Dave Gilbert. Used yeah. To that. Yeah, dude. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. I do yeah. like it. I do. I like it. I think it's kicking That's what it is. Heading over to Italy, Little Italy today because um, they're going to give me a audition to play in their little uh, downtown foyer area. Oh, so, okay. Um, is it slipping up? It is. No, it's uh, not. No? I don't know. I don't feel like it is. Yeah. I'm going to play with it I for mean, a minute, man. The I think it looks badass. Does it? Yeah. It's hard, though. Like, even when I put one on, I'm still adjusting it. Of course. And kind of, you know, making it right. But yeah, it's, yeah. I think, Chris, you could straighten the hat out a little bit better. Like maybe even pull it down. Or is it, do you go loose? You can, go, you can make it looser if you want. Because now that we got the thing on it, yeah. Yeah. Because I think you could bring it down. The uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm liking that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, man. It's like letting them, you know. And I know about style, guys. Let me tell you. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't. Sunset know. Jail? I don't yeah, of course know. you do. <laughs> you guys have a style company, for God's sake. You must have some style. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Dude, yeah, it's pretty yeah, badass. Pretty I dig it. Right, yeah, man. I do. I do. Well, let me just say for the viewers, I have begun yet to experiment <laughs> with the different looks that I could have. Yeah. yeah. No, it looks dope. It look, <laughs> can you turn your head that way just so I can get a little side shot? Yeah. And then slowly bring it back? Oh, yeah. I mean, look at that. There it is. <laughs> No, oh, but uh, storm. the no, head wrap will really, uh, with the hat like that, it's really, and especially I'm sure when you're playing, I'm sure you sweat a little bit too and stuff. So that will help a lot. And it's very breathable. It's a whisking kind of material. I can't believe it's not wicking. butter. Yeah, wicking, <laughs> wicking. Dude, thanks for letting me get in the hair there, man. Yeah. Uh, I actually have not done that before. No? Digging no, in. But, uh, First time you styled somebody? Yeah. I mean, maybe my styled another sister bro. or, yeah, yeah, but first time styling another bro. Appreciate you letting me get in there. Uh, that was really quite fun. I and, can uh, see. I can feel that my hair looks fairly neat probably with this on. Yeah. It, it does. Shaggy, it does. It yeah. does not look shaggy. Hang on. One last pass uh, on the tail at the end. Let's call him. All right. Sorry about my drinking away here. got to do the tail. El Rubio's real good on the, you know, the details, so. El Rubio's a detail guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, spelling detail guy, you know. especially with the spelling. 
<laughs> when I first met him, we were discussing my hair needs pretty quick into the initial meeting. We were talking oh, yeah. about my yeah. hair needs. Straight and you seem to understand the details of okay. the little wispy ends that yeah, get out, yeah, all that yeah, stuff. That's yeah. the stuff we hate. Yeah. Dude, that is yeah. kick ass, man. Are you happy yeah. with it? Yeah. yeah. I'm stoked, too. Looks Am good. I in the club now? <laughs> Can I join your club? <laughs> Dude, you've been in weeks ago. You were in Years long ago. before we were. You were in it <laughs> yeah. way before we were in it. Uh, that's the thing, too. Like, uh, I'd, I'd just like to say, because you br- bring that up, you know, it's like the long hairs, this has the, this concept of, of what it is to be a guy with long hair has been around far, 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 far before we have constructed this brand and put a logo to it and, you know, worked on getting the community together and everything. Mm-hmm. It's ages. It goes back to the Bible, literally. Yeah. Before that. Yeah. Before that. Before that. Before that. Interestingly BC, enough, we're I'm talking a big BC. fan of Roman history, okay, okay, right? And there was when the when they began to let um, inter, uh, what do you call it? foreigners become join the Senate? Yeah. The first issue they had were the long-haired Gauls being in the Senate House because the Romans kept their hair short during that uh, era. This is pre-Christ. This long-haired is, Gauls coming in Those long-haired here. Gauls in the Senate House, nobody liked it. Yeah. Get a job, you Gaul. I think they were in there making some good points with their long hair and everything, <laughs> yeah, man. We need were. to get some sanitation in the Greek quarter. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Come on. <laughs> Have you guys heard of plumbing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dude, I'm really, pumped really, on this. I think it's badass. I am too. Yeah. I haven't even looked at myself yet, but I feel a sense of confidence has been sort of elevated. Not that Good. I wasn't already quite Good. confident, but yeah. I'm feeling uh I'm feeling like I could maybe go uh meet somebody's grandmother <laughs> yeah, totally. and keep my cool at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Heck yeah. Well, um we, Dude, are, can we what would you be willing to play a song for us? Yeah, I would absolutely. Let's close it out with a song. with a song. You down yeah, for that? Sure. Okay. Uh, we'll. I'll just mess with the camera. If you want to get set up, Chris, you want to help? Can I use if, the bathroom? Can we? I know yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, for sure. Yeah. Just real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go. Yeah. You hit the bathroom. Actually, we're not going to pause. We're going to keep it going. We'll so just edit you, it out. We'll oh, chat wait, and. Sorry. Me and you just need to be chatting. Well, I figure I gotta get, get my guitar out anyway. And if you guys are going to hear it, I might have to put the mic on the floor, maybe. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's totally good. Whatever we need to do for the setup. Just some bros ripping up some seltzers over here, <laughs> doing each other's hair. <laughs> yeah. We're cool. just I doing it up, baby. Anyway, I wore the, uh, the, the the black and white, uh, the polka dot. What's that one called? I wore that one to the uh, to the show the other night. To the oh, that door's a little <laughs> stuck. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, nice. And it just it, it was covering me like I wanted it to, but then it started to come up a little bit, and I just didn't have time to fix it. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. No worries. Killer. Well, uh, yeah, man, this is awesome. Uh, guys, Mark's special guy. I don't know what else to say other than that. <laughs> I mean, the, the, there's so many more stories we could dig into, uh, the travel and, uh, you know, just how music has really taken them all over the country and the world is really awesome. And uh, all the great work with uh, – the disability organizations and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's just fantastic. Gus just keeps diving in for another seltzer here and there. Yeah. Why not? Uh, <laughs> just to speak on a, the experience there, that was the first time I've done another man's hair. And initially, I even, you know, even El Rubio, you know, kind of like, is it going to be uncomfortable with your fingers up in some other guy's hair and stuff? <laughs> and uh, not only was that really comfortable, uh, you kind of try to strike a balance between being accommodating, but also treating folks with disabilities just like they want to be treated just like everybody else. Uh, and our experience of our friends uh, who have differences. Mm-hmm. But uh, I really enjoyed a chance. You know, he wants to look badass, just like everybody else. We all want to look cool. We yeah. want our hair to look good. Yeah. And it's hard for him to brush or comb it or even like he said he could get one foot back there, but he can't get both feet to actually right, right. tie a ponytail. And I, I hope he likes the way it looks, but I thought it looked pretty freaking I badass, think, yeah. dude. And that was a really fun <laughs> experience. And hopefully, you know, I hope he does walk out of here confident in yeah, his hair. Totally. I think it looks good. I like the hat with the wrap underneath. A little unique swag there. Going a little Italy after this. Come on. No one's rocking the GI snow. Balling <laughs> it up in little Italy. Yeah. Dope. Dope it's city. Great. It's great. Um, so... 
We're going to invite everyone out to the San Diego yeah, Music Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, this podcast will be recorded, and in a couple of days, that event is going to be over, at which point this will be irrelevant. But if you are one of the first listeners when this first drops, mm-hmm. it is this Friday, October 18th, 2019, in Ocean Beach at the New Break Church. We would love to have you come come out if you are in or close to San Diego. Mark is going to be playing. We're going to have Jefferson J. We're going to have a lot of, bunch of long hairs, bunch of bros, bunch of live music, inducting some extremely talented musicians into the San Diego Music Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And I'm pumped to be there. And Yeah. Well, what's even great about just talking about here on this podcast and hearing from Mark and everything is, yes, if you're here by Friday, fantastic. But you're going to have next year, too. This thing is not going to stop. This is a tradition that Jefferson is going to keep going year in, year in, year out. So you can Google it. And if you can't make it this year, we really hope you can uh, make it the following year or within the next 10 years because it's going to be happening. You got 10 years to <laughs> yeah. uh, to get involved. <laughs> exactly. Or longer. Exactly. I'm going to do the same thing real quick. Okay. All right. We got, uh, we got our man, Mark, is coming back into the room here. Let's. What would you think? You saw yourself in the Damn, mirror? I, I mean – Steven Seagal, who? <laughs> so, did you like it? I mean, is it your, is it your I style? like the okay. look, man. Okay. I feel like I got my long hair still, but I'm kind of presentable. <laughs> it's not in my face. Yeah. You know, I never complain about not having hands, honestly. But when a little tiny hair tickles my nose, oh. I've got my good foot on the steering wheel. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what I'm reducing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, perfectly honest with you. So, uh. having like, yeah, I, you yeah. know, I, I like it. I like the way it looks, and I like the way it feels, actually. Yeah. And I'm not just the infomercial in here. No. I mean, this is cool. That's this is great. a great look. Good, I know. It looks good. I can tell that it feels good. Like, just being t- just having it out of the face, off the sides, getting a little breeze in the neck, right? I mean. And some style with the headband, yeah. you know? It's yeah. not, uh, totally, yeah. totally. You throw the shades on right there? I mean, yeah. are you a rock star or what? Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Somebody else said I was. You never call yourself one. Somebody else told me I was one. I'm going with it. Okay. I'm going to get my guitar out. Yeah, and, uh, sure. Do you need any? Beverage. Yeah, you got it. We got more if you need another one. Gus, can we get a reload over here? Yeah, great. Uh, he brought him in already. No, yeah. I'm not. Okay, sure. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people want to know, what is your good foot? <laughs> not that one sorry <laughs> i went to answer it's all water it's fixable yeah it's all good it's Probably, uh, <laughs> it's no no it's fine i'm sorry buddy <laughs> i'm actually right right handed but I, I play guitar left left-handed or left-footed okay. okay i was born uh just when i started learning guitar i thought that making chords would be the more difficult aspect so mm-hmm. I, I decided to use my um my good foot to do the chord. So I actually learned like Jimi Hendrix, kind of like left handed. Uh, okay. So. Okay. So I'm going to yeah. get that out. And... What was the verdict? Stoked. On it? Super stoked. Hell yeah. 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 I like it, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I was just telling him, yeah, I could, I don't know, I could go to a job interview or something like that, and, but still have not sacrificed my identity. In. Yeah. Right. And I like the, uh, the stylish look of the headband. You know, it's, <laughs> It's not, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, cool. it's got a little well, we swag. Know. We know what you mean. That's why we got those things. It's why we uh, have introduced them, you know, as a product, and they've been uh, a staple ever since the first day we put them out there. Are they? Are they? Uh, what was your first? Your first design? Hair, so, of the headband, yeah. we just went uh, black, I believe. Okay. Was we went some solid colors, and we had a few uh, patterns and simple patterns and stuff. But the we Balboa. learned. We learned our lesson uh, because when we first launched Hair Ties, we did like all these cool designs, but we didn't have any solid colors, zero solid colors. And everybody was like, guys, hair ties for guys are cool, but like, where's black? We're like, "Uh, yeah, good point. (laughs) So the next run, we brought black out. So when we brought the head wrap, when we did head wraps, we knew like, yeah, you got to have black. Head wraps. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Head wraps. Is that what I'm wearing? Yeah, that's a head wrap, yeah. Where the headbands are a little bit thinner. Um, I think I thought of a good song, actually. Yeah, okay, I just, great. I, I usually uh, use something like this. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that one's cool. 
is cool. Well, that's got a little bit more of the top coverage. I think you that's know, what you were wearing on uh, Friday night or when we watched you the other day. Right, but I did find good coverage with the with the with the head wrap or with the other one I had. I just unfolded a little bit and it kind of went over the top, so it was yeah, almost yeah. like a full cover do rag, but left the crown of my head breathing, so I didn't get yeah. so hot. Yeah, yeah. So, legit. Uh, yeah, I spilled, I spilled my drink. It was just gonna slip out of my teeth. I was it's just. Oh water. man, you're the first one to do that here. <laughs> yeah, I bet I am. Huh? No. Party foul. No, no lots not. of uh, <laughs> spills have happened in here. That's why you do clear, clear, uh, clear beverages only. Exactly, right? dude. Just this water. table, like we were so pumped on this table and keeping it like pristine and proud of it and all this stuff, and then like Gus just ruined it in the first <laughs> month. Really? <laughs> I don't think I actually I, I kept mine off the table. I didn't splatter the table. No, no, it's good. Out. Yeah, no, this like is with a the, razor blade. The razor. <laughs> blade. Oh, razor Cutting blade? things on the table with nothing yeah. underneath. Oh. It. <laughs> Where'd you get the table? Is it like expensive or is it just nice? We got it from Father Joe's. Okay. Um, you know, and yeah, it was it actually this table buying it new. So this is a German table. Uh it's like so it's really crazy designed. There's the extension is built in underneath, so you pull these sides out and then they fold like right out. This table weighs a ton. Oh. And uh super thick, nice wood. Uh, getting it into this space was Gus almost died. Like literally like he was collapsing. We thank God we've made it with zero injuries, but, uh, you know, uh, extensions are at the end. Yeah. 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 Yeah, In the middle. Yeah. Yeah, That was great. Yeah. So super cool. Um, but this table has some, a nice story. I did look up the retail price for this to buy it new. It was like six thousand dollars. Oh yeah, Gosh. we got it for like uh, three hundred or something. Wow, <laughs> and then weighs like five hundred pounds. Gus immediate, Not quite. immediately probably, proceeded to slice the super expensive wood with the razor blade. <laughs> what was he doing? Like chopping? chopping we it was up or, uh, it was when we were opening the hair for the great cut. Oh, well, I, honestly, it's kind of our fault. I mean, no one thought of it. We were just in here trying to bust the hair out. So. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, anyone could have done it. When I was about 14, <laughs> I was cutting the sleeves off a T-shirt or something, and my Super Nintendo cord was underneath and just sliced right through it. <laughs> oh, no. And I almost started crying, dude, because I was like, oh, my God, I can, I can never replace that. Really? It was just toast. Toasted it. Okay, so we need to reestablish our mics here real quick. We're going to keep recording. Everybody, just hang on here for a Doing sec. A little bit of, yeah, we're going to repos- so good with this room here back up a little bit. Yeah, you, got, you have enough room? Yeah, I do. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. Okay, so let me bring, uh, I'm bring your mic down. Uh, I'll let you do that. Yeah, no, let's kick it over here. All right, cool. Yep, so we'll bring this guy. Uh, can you just guide my slack in over here? Want it as close as we can here, right? Mm. I guess, yeah. Have you done much mic and guitars in No, you? no, never. <laughs> never. You're actually, well, no, Jefferson played in here too. But you and Jefferson are the, uh, I think. RalphQuasar.com. I'm going to get my vocals too. What if I point it up just uh, a little bit? Well, actually, no, no. I'll bring, uh, okay. I'll bring my mic over. Right here. Yeah, let's see this one. Let me, uh, there, hey. Yeah, why don't you, uh, hold on one sec. Oh. Oh, yeah. That sounded great. Okay. And El Rubio, why don't Rubio. you, uh. El Rubio. Let me, okay, let's just, let's just do this it's one deadly, second. It's deadly to engage El Rubio. <laughs> it's a deadly endeavor. I like that. Yes, dude. <laughs> Uh, I told you over there. Yeah. yeah, I grew up here. Why don't, El Rubio, why don't you come over here on this side and give me one sec. We are got to get our camera. Well, cameras back on. Okay, cool. Just threw in a new battery so we don't run out. And you got you don't have a ton. So you can look through there, but yeah, a little And yeah, why don't you just work the camera there, El Rubio? All right, we are uh, 
Let's uh, let's just test your vocals here. Test, you... test, test. Can't lean in too much and play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm heavy. gonna no. I'm turning. I'm gonna turn up your that mic, Max. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, excellent. Oh yeah. Why do guys always want to try to play? Yeah, yeah, guys yeah. always want to play heavy metal on their acoustic guitars. Like if these guys go, "Oh, you play Metallica," yeah. I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> Kumbaya, Kumbaya." No, I do have, a, I think, an appropriate song. Yeah, it's let's... not one of my originals. It's a Charlie Daniels song, but uh, okay. People say I'm a no good. much money but I damn sure got it made and I ain't asking nobody for nothing if I can't get it all on my own yeah and if you don't like the way I'm living just leave this long haired country boy alone <laughs> teacher man talking on the TV he's putting down rock and roll in a donation, said he's worried about my soul. Jesus walked on the water, and I do believe that's true. But sometimes I think that old preacher man could try to do a little walking too, cause I ain't asking nobody for nothing. If I can't get it all on my own, yeah, yeah. And if you don't like the way I'm living, just leave this long haired so cowboy alone. No. goes to college and the poor boy goes to work poor girl wants to marry and the rich girl want to flirt drunkard wants another drink of wine and the politician wants your vote i don't want much of nothing at all but i might take another toke and i ain't asking nobody for nothing if i can't get it all on my own if you don't like Like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Charlie Daniels band right Dude. there. <laughs> so, so badass. Thanks, yeah. That was fun. Loved it. Love it. I mean, you know, we could get really 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fun, man. I had a great time here, you guys. I'm pretty stoked about my new possibilities and my look, too. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I was ready for a new look. Dude, I don't have too. to. I don't have to get rid of the hair to keep my to get a new look. Like I can keep my hair and have a new look too. Yeah, I'm really seriously, seriously excited no, absolutely. about that. Yeah. Uh, and you know what too is just working with what you got. You know, I mean, there's a lot of options you have with using accessories, so you don't have to cut it for a while. That's right. Yeah. And if I ever yeah. do, I'm gonna. If I do cut it, because I have fought long and hard for it. Yeah. I want it to mean something. I want to give it to whatever to, to your to your charity. That awesome, you I really would. Dude, we appreciate that. Absolutely. And I I get some pretty good curls, man. Yeah. I, I imagine a, a little Shirley Temple would probably want my hair. Yeah. Well, do you want to do you want to play one more or? Sure, I'm happy to. Okay, I, I think it would be rad to get yeah, one more. Absolutely. Let's do the same thing we just had going because that was really good. Well, sound wise was alright. Sound wise is great. Yeah. And yeah, Chris worked that right camera here. again. Just leave it. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I don't have a part. Sometimes I feel like my only friend is the city I live in, the city of angels. Lonely as I am, together we cry. 
Such a chili peppers chord right there. Yeah. Well, I drive on the streets cause she's my companion. I walk through the hills cause she knows who I am. She sees my good deeds and she kisses the wind. Well, I never Well, hey, we really appreciate you uh, blessing us with the sounds, and uh, it's a real pleasure, man, to hear you play. Thanks for having me over, and I'm 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 all in. I'm, yeah. I'm part of the. I want to be part of the tribe now. Heck yeah, I do. Well, guys, I think we could, <laughs> I think we could close this out, huh? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Goffney. Thank Mark you, Goffney. Thank you so much, yeah. Mark. <laughs> We'll, we'll see, see you Friday, Friday at the San Diego Music Hall of Fame. That's right. See ya. <laughs> All right. That's a good one.